What's up? My name is Rich, and in this video right here, we're going to be doing a review of the UniNet 800 White Toner Transfer Printer. Toner. Did I say the word toner? I don't know. I color 800W. W, I believe, stands for white. Who knows? But this is going to be an honest and straight up um, real review because I've been using this printer for the past two, almost three months now. Who knows? I told you I was going to post a video, but if I posted a video immediately after the unboxing, it would not have been an honest review because I haven't been using the printer hands on. However, I've been using this printer dang near every day. We're about to break it down. I've also ran through a full set of toner already so we can even do some rough calculations on how much toner costs and all of that good stuff. So I think this is going to be a good video because you're gonna get the pros and you're also gonna get the cons. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So first and foremost, what is the iColor 800 white toner transfer printer? So in short, it prints out a laser sheet of paper that we can use to press the design onto a t-shirt. It works just like a regular house printer, just a little bit bigger. Looks like a work office printer because I'm pretty sure it is with a little bit of modifications to it. Uh, the thing about it that interests me is the speed that it prints out prints out quite quickly so let's go ahead and dive into the process of printing a t-shirt and in the end of this video we'll talk about the pros and cons of this printer and uh before we even get there i discussed the pricing in the unboxing but i go ahead and mention it again you'll see this printer the tabletop version without the bottom uh rolling cart is eight thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars with the rolling cart is nine thousand nine hundred five dollars and I don't know if that rolling cart is worth a grand, but um, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, where else are you going to buy it, right? Um, I think I'm already mentioning a con, <laughs> but a grand for the cart is a little pretty crazy, right? But we'll talk more about that a little later. Let's just go ahead and print some t-shirts out. Let's see how it's done. All right, so one thing we do want to take notice, the software iColor Pro Rip is on a Windows computer and primarily I use a Mac for um, managing my orders, uh, doing design and all of that. However, I do have the Windows computer hooked up because I was editing a video. I use my Windows computer mainly to edit videos, but now I also use it for the RIP software for the printer. At first, this was an issue for me because I didn't want to get used to using a Windows computer again. But over time I realized it's not that big of an issue. All I did was create a network and I just made a folder on the network where I shared the designs across both computers. So it's very easy to uh, manage the files and then I just have the Windows computer uh, running the software dedicated to print. Okay so now I'm getting the designs prepped and ready for print. So one thing to keep in mind when designing your t-shirt prints Make sure you go ahead and design it in the size that you would like to print it in. Um, this will make it a whole lot easier whenever you drag it over to your Pro Rip. So let's say if we already had the design ready to go, we just click and drag it on over to the Pro Rip and it'll be ready to go. However, this design right here is much too large for the actual size I need. So I have to resize it in the actual size that I need. And before we do so, we need to figure out what size paper we want to print on, as the printer can print on multiple sizes. So let's go ahead and check out what paper size we're going to be printing on. So for this one right here, we're going to be doing a standard 11 by 17. I've been using this one quite a bit. There's different medias, there's different sizes. I know there's a whole lot of variables, um, however, for me, I like to keep it simple. Once I find something I like, then I just stick to that for the rest of my life, I guess. <laughs> um, but there's different sizes, so we can print real big, real small. There's different types of media. You can do tattoos, you can do metallics. We'll get into that later. Let's try to keep it simple, but there's just so many options available that it's hard to keep simple. But let's go ahead and still get the t-shirt going. This video is very loaded because there's so many loaded things that you can do. All right, so let's get the design up. Um, let's go ahead and make one of them 11 by 17 so that it's really big. Let's see how that one.
Okay, I got the print files ready. Let's go ahead and click print and see how it looks. Okay, I went ahead and clicked print. Um, I believe it can do 45 sheets per minute. If I'm wrong, I'll put right here the corrected amount. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so we got our three items printed out. Um, we're waiting on the heat presses to warm up. Uh, before then, let's go ahead and give this a quick look. So, this is one of the items that we printed. This is the large one. 11 by 17 is the actual size of this sheet of paper. Um, so the design itself is probably like 10 and a half by 16 or so. However, it's pretty big, right? However, if you saw my last video I mentioned, it can feel kind of papery. I've realized it feels like that if you're just printing a solid image in a very large format. So um, this right here does have a bit of a grunge texture. Um, so that does help on that a little bit. And I do say just a little bit. However, I am going to over exaggerate that it feels like paper as a print. It's not going to feel like ink on a t-shirt. I'll let you know that right now, but we're going to discuss that a lot more at the end of this video. Um, another thing I do want to point out is the fact that that had a large solid black print, right? This one does, but it does have a grunge texture, so that does help out the little distressed effect on it. But this one right here, uh, the software itself, the Pro Rip has a tool called knock me out black so if we're printing on a black t-shirt why would we want the black to be printed um so this one right here already took all the black out for us we just uh clicked on the software we said we want to remove all of the black on this image so it removed all of the black for us and now something like this does not feel as papery because it's not a large print just solid prints in smaller areas so it is a little more unnoticeable. A design like this printed on a shirt feels much, much better. So you do want to keep that in mind when you are making your designs, okay? So um, let's go ahead and get our shirts out. Oh, I forgot to mention the third print. All right, so this one right here is how I typically print t-shirts. So these 11 by 17 sheets are about four bucks a pop. I don't print every customer's picture jumbo size, right? So that'll cost me about four bucks per print. Plus toner, which is around 15 cents or so for this printer, I believe. We'll get into that later. We're gonna get into all the details later. This right here is how I usually print t-shirts. I would gang two designs onto one sheet. So this ends up costing me about two bucks per design. So this entire sheet is four bucks, but it'll end up costing me about two bucks per t-shirt print, right? So now we have two designs on this one sheet right here. We have one right here and we have one right here that we could do. So let's grab our t-shirts. You know what? I don't know why I said let's grab our t-shirts. We have to do the A to B process first. So these aren't exactly transfers yet. At the moment, they're just a uh, toner on a clear sheet of paper. So these are what you call an A sheet. What we need to do is combine the A sheet with the B sheet. Uh, the B sheet carries all the adhesive. Um, I don't know all the technical terms, but it carries the adhesive on this sheet of paper right here. And uh, what we're going to do is merge the two together so all the adhesive is on the print area, and then it'll be ready to press onto a t-shirt. So let's go ahead and turn this into uh, a transfer. All right, so now I'm at the heat press. This is going to be a two minute process at 310 degrees. I know a lot of people always have issues with the heat press um, and the merging and all of that. So each box that the media comes in shows the uh, temperature and the pressure that you should set it at. So I've tried what's said to be medium pressure um, for two minutes. And I was struggling with that when I first got it. It didn't work for me. And then I tried to do uh, low pressure, which I saw online. 
um, and that didn't work for me neither. So what I did was just do super heavy pressure and that ended up working for me. And ever since then, I've been getting consistent results and I've never had an issue. So I have the A sheet and I also have the B sheet laying on top. So the B sheet is the adhesive, the A sheet is the actual print design. All right, so we're going to put that on top and we're gonna fold a little tab right here so it's easy for us to peel off. Now we're going to take a piece of parchment and we're gonna take a piece of craft paper and lay it directly on top. And now I'm just gonna push it down and we're going to wait two minutes. So when this heat press comes up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you either have some gloves or some kind of rag to uh, hold the paper down because it's going to be super hot. All right, here we go. We're gonna take our craft paper off. So now this part right here, um, I usually don't have a problem with this top sheet. It's the bottom part that's gonna be really hot. So what I do is take the rag and use that to press onto the bottom sheet so it stays still. And I just do a nice, even, tight pull all the way across. Now I'm probably covering up the camera, but I'm not going to stop. So now we got a nice, smooth pull. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that to you again without actually doing it just yet. So let's take our second sheet. Um, let's compare the two, right? So if you can see how it's white, that means there's adhesive on it. Right here, this is just the actual toner print. So let me demonstrate that peeling process. So, I, so this is the design. This is the top B sheet. This is the A sheet. This is the B sheet. All right, so let's imagine we already did a two minute press. Once the two minute press is over, we're gonna to wanna to use this right here. Hold down the A sheet, and whenever we peel the B sheet, we wanna make sure it, all right, right here. It's nice and smooth and tight. And what we want to do is stay consistent. We just wanna peel the whole time. Because if we stop, there's not gonna be a consistent amount of adhesive on that A sheet. So we wanna make sure we stay as consistent as possible when we are peeling away. All right, so let's go ahead and push that down. All right, so that is two minutes right there. Let me go ahead and talk to you guys about something real quick. So even though this is two minutes, the other part is about 30 seconds. You pressing it onto a t-shirt. Now, two minutes may sound like a long time, but after the first uh, couple presses or so, I usually already have um, transfers ready to go. I'm usually able to do the 30 second press on three t-shirts before this two minute process is done, if that makes sense. Um, I'll try to explain that later at the end as well. So um, the end of this video, it's gonna be pretty packed with information that you only receive from somebody who's been using this printer for the past two, three months. Um, so this one right here is about to be ready and then we have one more that we need to press and then we can press them all onto t-shirts. All right, so let's go ahead and peel this one. Okay, put that over there. We're gonna wanna do this immediately as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. We wanna do it while it's still hot. If it cools down, we're gonna have issues. All right, there we go, nice and smooth. And uh-oh, might have messed something up. Ooh, it's hot. All right, here we go again. As you can see, nice solid white, except for the distressed print areas, which is not supposed to have anything printed regardless. So this distressed effect also helps out if you messed up, uh, it hides it. All right, so we also have this one right here, which is the last one before we start pressing onto a t-shirt. So as I've mentioned, we're gonna take the B sheet, put it on top of the A sheet. Okay, so one thing I do want to mention, um, and I know I'm making this look really easy right now. I know a lot of people have a hard time with 
actual merry process and I know it's easy to get discouraged when you first try to do it alright so it took me about 10 hours to learn it I spent five hours on it the first day I got a printer and spent five hours on it the next day I got a printer and it took me about three to almost four hundred bucks worth of sheets of prints that I threw away it took me about a hundred prints so about four dollars a pop you know so uh, somewhere around there that I just ended up throwing away so there was a learning curve however um with this process after the learning curve it was consistent it was consistent and it's easy to teach someone else how to do it and once they know how to do it it's smooth selling but that learning curve I'm telling you it's just that learning curve don't get discouraged Boom. All right, now we got three transfers ready to go, really four of them. Okay, so now we have our transfers ready, and why do I have a pair of scissors? Well, this is the trimming process. We have to trim the edges. However, if you have one of those guillotines, you can stack them all together and just cut them all off at once, all the edges off at once. However, I don't have one of those. Maybe I should get one of those. The amount of shirts I've already done with this thing. Anyways, you just take your scissors, and it's hard to see, but um, see, this is one of the cor corners that I uh, folded. You can see where some of the adhesive got on there, right? So it usually gets on all of the edges, even though you can't really see it. So you're going to want to trim it down. So just take this right here, boom, boom, boom. Now, this one is ready to go. All the edges are gone. I don't want to do the same thing. And for this one right here, since it is two different prints, I'm going to want to go ahead and cut down to two. All right. Now let's go ahead and press these onto t-shirts. Okay, so this process right here is 30 seconds. Let me go ahead and line this up. Make sure we're nice and straight and even. Mm, I don't know if I like this one on here. Yeah, this one we're gonna need to use for the black shirt. Let me take this one off. Um, you're supposed to put the parchment paper on top of it to protect the uh, t-shirt. But when you're doing a whole bunch of shirts at once, that is one extra step that I do not do. Thirty seconds, three hundred and ten degrees. Now we're gonna have to take this off and let it cool down for about five minutes or so. Okay, so now we got this one cooling down. While that one's cooling down, we go ahead and press more t-shirts. So if we were just doing one t-shirt at a time, it might not be worth it because there is a lot of waiting time. However, so since this is cooling down, if we were just waiting on one t-shirt, it might not be worth our time. However, since it's cooling down, we already have another one ready to go. We just go ahead and start pressing. So for example, as soon as I press this shirt, I go ahead and go over to the other heat press to check on those A to B marry process if I have more sheets that I need to marry. So it's always a continuous thing. There's always something to do. And those waiting periods of times, it's not really an issue. Right, so like I said, now this one's ready to go. This one's ready to cool down and wait. While that one's cooling down, we go ahead and grab another t-shirt and we go ahead and make another press. Grab our transfer sheet, throw it directly on top, and go ahead and press it. And if I have to worry about an A to B transfer process, I head on over there, go ahead and press that down for two minutes. I come back over here. I'm usually able to do uh, three t-shirts while that two minutes is going. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I really hope it does. So I usually go ahead and get as many shirts done as possible. And by the time... And by the time I get done with a stack of shirts, then all of the shirts that are cooling down will be cooled down and ready for the next process. Okay, so now this process right here can also be difficult. They can all be difficult actually. So um, it just requires a little bit of technique, a little bit of a learning curve. That's practically it. So this is the first shirt we did. It's pretty cooled down. Now we need to peel this off. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it's hard to pull. Um, so there's a little bit of a technique to it. 
we want to keep this nice and close and tight as possible when we peel as you can see right there it's peeling the shirt off too um we don't necessarily want to snatch it because the design can come off with it um so what i usually do is keep it nice and very tight as you can see right there it's starting to come off and it's still on the shirt So you're going to have to play around with it um, just to get it going. However, we can move a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and do so. So here's a little technique that I've uh, come to develop. I use this left hand to press it down and I pretty much try to fold it with my left hand. It's not going to bend and fold. It's just going to keep a very nice, super nice curve. That way it makes it flat the entire time. So while I peel with this one, I use my left hand to push it down like so. And there we have it. We got the design on the t-shirt. As you can see, it's very shiny. So we have to do our very last press. And as you can see, it just seems like one big vinyl print on a t-shirt. So it is kind of has that papery effect that I was speaking of. However, it's because of the design and it's kind of hard to explain. I wish I could show it to you in person, but it's the best that we can do. However, we have to do one final 20 second press. So let's go ahead and get that going. All right, so for this one right here, we are going to put the parchment paper or craft paper on top of the design because we don't want the design to get stuck to the heat press, do we? No, we don't. All right, so here we go. One last 20 second press, this is it. All right, so I usually do just kind of snatch this off, but you want to do the same thing. All right, look at that print now. It looks a whole lot better. It's not as glossy, not as shiny. It's a little more matted to the shirt. It looks a little more printed. I wish y'all could see it in person. It does have a little bit of a faded uh, black to it. That's because this printer does not have black ink. The 800 does not have black ink. Um, there is a way to make the black a little bit darker. Um, basically, and use all of the inks to make a black instead of uh, having black toner. But we're going to get into that in the end of this video as well. See, if you feel it now, it does feel kind of papery, but to be honest, it's not that bad the distressed print helps out a lot i'm saying this a lot because i'm trying to over exaggerate it so that you guys are not disappointed when y'all get the printer um i noticed that being an issue when you see these types of videos um some people may show the print and they don't exaggerate things enough so whenever you do receive the printer and you do receive these types of results and you weren't aware of it happening then you become dissatisfied so i'm trying to let you know now ahead of time something like this right here um the average customer would think this was ink this right here they will start questioning maybe a little bit i've already sold thousands of these shirts within the past few months very low returns okay so it's not an issue for your customer okay i promise you that it's not an issue well i sell direct to customer i don't know how it is if you do b2b and sell in bulk that may be a different scenario but for me this has not been an issue all right so let me go ahead and peel this one off let me get you a close-up of this that way you can see what it looks like before and after the final press all right so i'm just gonna go a little bit quicker see that was pretty quick right majority of the time you have an issue peeling off is if it is mostly white print as we all know well if you've been printing t-shirts long enough um white ink always have thicker pigment so it always a different kind of issue so this is a before the final 20 second press just giving it a quick little look um all right so let me bring it back to the light real quick i want to show you how it's shiny 
All right, so right here you can see it's a little bit matted. This is the fine after the final press for this one. This one right here, you can see that shine before it is finished off. Final 20 second press. And as I've mentioned, while this is going on, I'm usually doing something else. So as this 20 second press comes down, I'm already peeling off one of those clear sheets uh, to get the next shirt ready. So I'm um, just always moving. I'm not doing it right now because I'm trying to demonstrate this entire process to you. But there is a whole production line process to this. All right, there we have it. All right, so this one is a whole lot better. Um, because this one is so big, you can definitely feel it a little more, but this one is smaller. This one right here is good to go, especially to a customer. This one's ready. But I mean, this one's ready too. It's just, um, like I said, I'm trying to over exaggerate. And I know I'm showing a whole lot and I'm repeating myself a whole lot, exaggerating things a lot. And that's because um, it's one of the reasons why I even got into YouTube because the reason why I'm just exaggerating myself so much is because when you make a $10,000 investment, I want you guys to know exactly what you're going to get, okay? Because I spent, you know, a five-figure amount on a printer before from a video I saw on YouTube. Looked great on YouTube, but when I got the printer, you know, wasn't what I expected. So I'm just going to show y'all as much as I can. So I didn't show y'all this one, but look at that. This one looks amazing. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. This one looks amazing without the black. I know this one's gonna feel great too. This is before the final press. This one looks awesome. Except for this part right here. So when we did the knock me out black, um, this, the color of this text was so dark that it took some of it out and it created a half tone, which is known as rasterization in this program um just to give it like a better feel but it wasn't necessarily so we could have turned the threshold down on the black so it wouldn't take just the dark colors out as well but only the black so we could have made those changes however we didn't so that is a learning process all right so there you have it look at the colors on that one that one is amazing um i don't know if i'm gonna color grade this footage but my camera does shoot flat images because it's made for you to color grade it after you um after you film all right so look at the colors on this one right here that is amazing so this one looks really good blue and pink really pops on black looks nice and this one has such a better feel than this one right here because this one just has it all over you can feel it. I mean, well, you can hear it. You can hear what it would probably feel like. This one right here, you can barely hear it, right? Because all the black was taken out. All right, so as you can see, all these little half tones it's from the rasterization effect when we did the knock me out black. Um, we could have adjusted the threshold a little bit. Keep in mind whenever you make your designs, uh, you know for a laser toner transfer um keep that in mind but yeah so you can see the difference um in creating your design properly papery not as papery this one's awesome this one still works the only reason why it seems as bad as it is now is because we have something better to compare it to however if this was by itself still great nice solid white whites are pretty hard to do um for this printer it's the opposite black is hard to do um it's pretty dark right here though all right so let's go over a few things all right so let's go ahead and go over a few things oh hold up that was a size medium now i got a shirt on so it seems like it took a little bit of time right but it's not as much as you would think two minutes for the merge a to b 30 seconds to press onto the shirt 
and then we gotta let it cool down for at least like five minutes and then 20 seconds final press that sounds like a whole lot of time and that is if you're doing one t-shirt so there was only at one point in time i decided to calculate from full a to b process just one person two heat presses and how many shirts i could do so a full color full color now full color t-shirts gotta remember these are full color t-shirts so about roughly two hours i was able to do 44 t-shirts and that was full color you gotta remember these are full color t-shirts right um two minutes on the heat press while the two minutes are merging two sheets together the first initial one you know you you're probably wasting that two minutes because you don't have any transfers to work with as of yet but after that one you have one sheet which will be two designs you cut that up and you go ahead and press it onto another shirt so while that 30 seconds of pressing it onto a shirt you have two minutes going on of your a to b process i'm usually able to do three shirts so three 30 second presses while that two minutes is going on then i take all those off let it cool down i'm literally always going never stopping so pressing onto a shirt pressing onto a shirt and then in the very end i don't have any sheets left to merge i don't have any more shirts left to press i just have them all cooled down so then i have two heat presses open so what i do then is take the clear part off do a 20 second press on one t-shirt while that one is going since i have the second heat press free now i take the clear off of another shirt press that one for the final press by the time i clamp it down the other one is ready to take off and that's how i finish off so all those little waiting periods there's always something to do in between time so it's not as much time as one would think so what's the benefit of me saying that a ten thousand dollar investment for the amount of t-shirts that you're going to be able to produce you're only held back by the amount of heat presses that you have which is pretty amazing. I could get a third heat press to move a little bit faster, but at that point, I'll, I'll need another body to run a, another set of heat presses because about three heat presses for one person, you're pretty much maxing out your work capacity. However, you're only limited by the amount of heat presses that you have. And I'm saying that that means the amount of shirts that you can produce is just limited by a few thousand dollars. When it comes to, I'm comparing this to directed garment now because um, directed garment is the alternative for one-off full color t-shirt prints when it comes to directed garment in order to produce more t-shirts faster you're limited by the actual directed garment printer machine itself so if you have a twenty thousand dollar dtg machine well let's compare the same price if you have a ten thousand dollar dtg printer machine if you wanted to print two t-shirts at the same time you would need to make another ten thousand dollar printer investment in comparison to the white toner transfer you're not limited by the actual transfer printers i mean you're able to print out 45 transfers at once which is practically double that if you're gaining two designs on one sheet 90 designs in a minute so this is not your bottleneck it's just only a matter of a few gram for some nice heat presses that's pretty amazing to me all right so let's go over some other things that you probably wouldn't know if you just had this printer for a day like how can you make your blacks darker so it's not gonna make a perfect black print however um it's gonna get a little bit better all you have to do is do a job color replacement let me go ahead and show you the toner you have your white magenta scion and yellow so there is no black there is no key what it does is mix these three inks together to create a black however the issue is that the yellow hue makes it look a little more of a faded black it makes it a little bit of a gray so what you can do they have another tool in the pro rip it's called job color replacement what you want to do is click on your design click on job color replacement click on the black and then you're going to want to replace the amount of inks that's being interjected into that print so you want to turn up the scion to 100 turn up the magenta to 100 and just lower the yellow down to anywhere between 80 to 90 um, you're going to want to play around with it and see what yields you the best results this memory card is about to be out okay I don't know where I left off I had to load some of the footage onto my uh, laptop so anyways I think we left off on I'm um, comparing it to direct to garment for the price of it definitely worth it 10 grand in comparison to uh, 10 to 20 grand direct to garment entry level printer uh, at least from my experience and the printer that I had totally worth it the thing about direct to garment as well is that I had is the fact that it had a learning curve and it was not consistent 
issues always popped up and the maintenance the maintenance was a pain in the you know what for the eye color 800 maintenance what maintenance and consistency once you get through that learning curve consistency is amazing um you can literally teach somebody else how to do this within a few hours as long as you already know it man you can get somebody going ASAP. I've already taught two other people who's worked for me how to use it within that day and they're able to work for me the entire day no problem. I mean they have a few questions here and there but man you can hire an employee ASAP with this. Anyways um, some of the other features it has different media types different media sizes if you thought 11 by 17 was large which is what we printed on you could print up to a 12.6 by 19 with this printer so you can get pretty large in size and you can also uh, gang up designs on that sheet as well and then there are different media types so not only can you print on t-shirts you can do um see i've never experienced with the other stuff because that's not what i bought the printer for to be honest but you could do tattoos you could do temporary tattoos you could also do metallics you could do hard surface where you could print on like a cardboard box or i believe you can also use it to do mugs not too sure you have to double check me on that one however there is one that has been amazing but the results aren't the greatest um, it is a one-step transfer. You can 100% print straight out of the printer and just go ahead and print it onto a light color t-shirt. So if you had an event that was going on that day and you need a t-shirt ASAP, there's nothing else that can compare to doing a full color transfer immediately. As soon as it come out of the printer, you can use it and press onto the t-shirt. I think it's rated for about 10 washes. I printed a shirt for my son and we washed it about three, four times, then it started cracking and whatnot. And speaking of wash tests, I'm going to be sure to wash these t-shirts and include that in this video before it ends. That is another thing that I do want to touch on. You're going to want to include the wash instructions on a little thank you business card, whatever it may be, in the poly bagger or however else you send your t-shirts to your customer and let them know it needs to be washed inside out. I'm not too sure what UniNet's instructions is, but I put wash inside out, cold water, tumble dry low, or hang dry. So make sure your customer is aware of that. Because if it's not washed inside out, it is very likely to crack. So I'm trying to be straightforward to you. That way you know to expect these things once you receive this printer. So that is why the, the stress effect, uh, little grunge textures on the t-shirt helps out a lot. Because if it looks like that's already a part of the shirt, it can hide little defects that you messed up on. Not only that, but after the customer washes the shirt, and if it messes up, they won't be able to tell because it's distressed in the first place. So that's that for the wash test and the different medias. Another thing, like I mentioned before, it is a thousand extra bucks for the rolling cart. As you can see, this has this right here. Um, without this little rolling cart, this entire top part is just supposed to go onto a tabletop. Um, but not only is it just a thousand bucks extra, with that extra thousand bucks, it also includes Smart Cut, which I don't know why. Smart Cut, what that does, I think it's more so for the smaller printers that can't print large sizes. Say if a smaller printer like the i550, I don't know the rest of the printers. We'll dive into that in another video, but let's say the i550 cannot print a 12 by 19, right? However, it can print on a smaller size like a um, eight and a half by 11, and it can take a 12 by 19 design I don't even know if the math matches up but it can take a 12 by 19 design and cut it in half so that it prints out on two different sheets of paper for that printer and you can press those two designs together onto the shirt so you can have a large size print from a smaller printer so that's how smart cut works I hope that makes sense um, not only that with that extra thousand bucks is a two-year warranty so I believe that's what you're really paying for but so far this seems like a workhorse um, I don't think there's going to be any major issues like that. I did have a toner printer eight years ago. I had a Konica Minolta. I don't even know if that's how you say it neither. Um, I suck at pronouncing. Y'all know that. But I had a Konica um, and it worked great. I used to use it to print out nightclub ads. Um, I'm pretty sure you could do it with this as well. So pretty much you just print out a whole bunch of 4x6 gang sheet that onto a large card stock sheet of paper. And then you get yourself a cutter. It's like the guillotine that I was mentioning earlier. However, it's an actual machine that you can use to cut through hundreds of sheets at once. So that is another business venture that you can use with your printer if you really wanted to. It's printing ads, printing postcards. Um, 
things of that nature. So you could do that with this printer if you really wanted to. I mean, you see how many sheets of paper comes out at once. And uh, you would have to do your math on the profitability on that. And speaking of issues, there is one issue that I know is pretty common with a printer like this. I mean, just think about like a house printer, paper jams. It happens. The very first day I had this printer, I had a paper jam. The first sheet of paper went in and it got stuck. But the fact that I had a toner printer before, I didn't think anything of it like, oh, my printer was broken. As soon as it happened, I just started taking it apart and took the sheet of paper out. It's literally like a house printer, but a larger version. Um, once you take something apart, you can see where the paper is and you just pull the paper on out, put everything back and you're clear to go. So um, paper jams will happen. It's a printer. Um, I don't know why it happens. Y'all explain that to me. I mean, if y'all knew why it happened, it wouldn't happen, I guess. Anyway, so I ran through a complete set of toner already. So um, let's go ahead and look at it. I took a picture of the print count when I ran out. Took a screenshot of when there was no toner showing. There was a little bit of left. Even when you're that low, you can still get like about 100 sheets out. So about 100 sheets later, I was able to do about 2,242 prints off of the original toner that came with the printer. And for a new set of toner, it costs around 1500 bucks. So I did a little bit of rough math. So sometimes I would print one design on a sheet of paper and, and then sometimes I would gang sheet two designs on one sheet. So two designs on one sheet would still calculate as one print. So if I did like a rough estimate, let's say half of that was just one print. The other half was uh, a gang of two designs on one sheet. We'd be looking at 3,363 uh, single t-shirt prints and that ended up being about 44 cents per print. Um, I remember seeing on the brochure or whatever it is, it should have been around 15 cents. So I'm not too sure my math is rough on that. However, um, 44 cents still is not bad. Like for real, 44 cents, that's actually pretty amazing. So um, in total, you're probably looking at, if you're doing a full sheet, four bucks plus 44 cent per print. But for the majority of time for me, literally all the time is about uh, two designs on one print. So about two bucks plus 44 cents. Actually that 44 cents would be different for the two bucks. The 44 cents is an average of both one print and two design prints on one print. I know that's rough math. However, since I did run through it all and I got those numbers for you, even though the math is rough, I think that should give you a good idea of how much it costs to print um, with the toner and how long it can last you. So it lasts quite a bit. So that was like two months for me, about 3,000 t-shirts with this right here. I still sold t-shirts with other methods such as screen printed transfers and whatnot. However, I'm using this thing a little more and more every single day it's easy for me to employ somebody to use this thing so for one off full color prints this and this is an absolute great choice especially for the price nine ten thousand dollars um where the capability to scale is just being held back by an extra heat press it's pretty amazing to me and i'll try to get t-shirts up on my actual merch website with using this process and i'll try to write it in the description or something that way um there's somewhere that you can purchase to support me in um putting this video together and not only that you'll be able to see the quality of the t-shirt so um i'll try to work something like that out for you that way you can get an idea of how it feels like without me having to over exaggerate it several times in this video and uh that's pretty much it for this review i give it a thumbs up i would definitely buy it again i don't plan on going into direct garment again i don't plan on going back to screen printing this is the solution that works for me i don't know if it works for you but it's definitely working for me so i'm gonna give these shirts a wash test and then we're gonna end this video and that might be a day or two from now. It's actually 3.38 a.m. So um, give me a day or two and uh, <laughs> and uh, I'll finish this video out. I wanted to go to sleep halfway in this video. But anyways, see you in a second. Yo, what's up? I'm back. I got four, the four shirts. Uh, it's been washed and dried in various clothing in the washer and dryer four times. Um, two of them were washed inside out and two of them were washed the normal way. So shout out to the wifey because she ran it four times while doing the laundry. 
But before we before I show you all this, I haven't even checked it myself, but um there's one more technique that you can do with this um during the marrying process that can speed up that two minute um marry process. So what you could do I I have not personally uh, been able to uh, nail down this technique what you can do is let's say so this was the printed sheet and this is the B sheet so the A sheet and the B sheet you take it put it there you know you do your little fold then you do a whole nother set on top of it and another set you can do like up to three of them and press it at the same time for a lower temperature and lower amount of seconds then you peel the top one put it to the side then you would have two two sheets left and then you warm it up for about another five seconds because you know you have to uh, peel it while it's hot then you take the B sheet off of the second one and then you'll be left with one A B uh, married sheet left you warm it up and then you do the same thing so you could do about three sheets in maybe like two minutes and 30 seconds or maybe even two minutes because you have to lower the time I'm not too sure but that is another technique you can look into that can speed up your time now let's go ahead and look at these shirts this is the blue shirt. This one was washed inside out. There we have it. Four washes. It's a little wrinkled. You might want to put that in the little card that you'll send to your customer that I told you guys about earlier. Wash cold, tumble dry low, and if you want to iron it, place a pillowcase over it and then tell them to iron it because then that can flatten out all the wrinkles and it'll also help them over time you know give a little bit more press of the actual design into the shirt so just tell them and use a pillowcase so it still looks pretty good color is still there um once again that is a distressed effect so all of that is supposed to be there still has a little bit of that sound as you can hear it but man to be honest that's that's no biggie for me for some of you all, it may be a big deal. I know some of y'all stress that very heavily that y'all want that soft hand and ink feel. Well, you're not gonna get that out of this unless the design itself has a lot of negative space. Let, let me find the one that um, has the same design. But, all right, so this one right here. This one was washed regular, not inside out. This one still looks awesome. The color on this one is awesome. And see, you don't really hear it as much because all the parts that's supposed to be uh, black was not printed out. It's just negative space. It's the actual t-shirt itself. So this one right here is actually, since it's not one big thick print, it's a lot softer. This one is this one is pretty awesome. Look at the colors in that one. It stands out a lot on the black. And I know earlier I said it will crack, but it's not going to crack if you just wash it with the uh, simple wash instructions unless you do this first. So this is going to be unlikely to happen. Let me see, I kind of like this shirt, so let me not do it there. But let's see here. So if I stretch it, it will crack. It should crack. Hmm. Maybe I'm lying. Okay, I'm stretching it pretty hard. You can see in my face that I was really pulling that time. Well, it's not cracking, so. I could have sworn, I thought it was going to crack. Okay, so. Um, no cracking. But make sure that you guys have everything down packed. Your temperature, whenever you're pressing your shirt and all of that. There will be a big learning curve before you get that super nice press like that. So this one right here, gray shirt. Looks awesome still four washes this one is washed regular and last but not least this one was washed inside out these are all Bella canvas 3001 CVC shirts except for the blue one the blue one is the blue one is a next level shirt I don't know the actual style number on this one and except for the black one, this one is just 3000 C. I mean, 3001 C. So, here we go. Look at that. White is still nice and bright. So, even though some of you are looking for the soft hand, um, 
some of y'all may be looking for that white white is a difficult um color to deal with to get right white pigment is just so thick but there you have it let's try to crack this one. all right so is it focused all right here we go there we go that's what i was looking for but i'm doing that very hard so if you do that and then wash it, then the shirt's going to be ruined. But the chances of somebody doing that is very off. If you want to, just tell them not to stretch the shirt. But who says that? All right. So I hope that video helped you out. I color 800. Um, hit subscribe if you want to see some future stuff. Maybe me getting into the tattoos, um, the hard textile surface pressing, and all of that stuff. But for the most part, that was a I color Uninet 800 review pressing it onto t-shirts and I included the wash test um, I know that's a big deal so yeah I'll see y'all next time